Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about angles of polygons, which includes the interior sum of the polygons, of the angles, what an interior angle is and how to calculate it, and also about dealing with exterior angles. So let's take a look. So first of all, a diagonal. The word diagonal is a segment that connects any two non-consecutive vertices. And we should know that a uh, non-consecutive means that they're not one after another. So when I look at a triangle, a quadrilateral, a pentagon, and a hexagon, right? Triangle has three sides, quadrilateral has four, pentagon has five, hexagon has six. And I say to you, how many diagonals can we create in the polygon? Well, if I go to any vertex of a triangle and I try to connect it to any of the other vertices, they're consecutive because they're one after another, they're touching. It's a side. That's not considered a diagonal. So a triangle has no diagonals in it. A quadrilateral, I can take a vertex here and connect it to this opposite point. And whoa, that was just too much. So I'm going to redo that line. Too much, too much. And so this is a diagonal. It's connecting one vertex to another vertex that's not consecutive. And if I connected it to, let's say, this point here, that would be on the side. And we just don't want that. I can have another diagonal. So a triangle so far has zero diagonals. A quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, has two. So now let me go over and try out a pentagon. So I'm going to start from the top point. doesn't matter what point you start with. And here I can connect it twice and create two diagonals. From this point here, I can extend it. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create as many unique diagonals as I can. And when I do that, what you'll notice is the amount of diagonals I was able to make is five. It's a star. And a hexagon. So if I start, let's say, from this point here, I can make one, two, three, then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So in a hexagon, I can make nine diagonals. Something we might notice about patterning here from zero to five, nine, is you might say, okay, well, look, it's increasing by two, and then it's increasing by four, and it's increasing by, I'm sorry, why did I put four there? I'm just having a bad day. I'm not going to edit this out either. Three, and then four. So as the number of sides increases, the number of diagonals is increasing, um, adding on to the previous amount by one more. So adding two, adding three, adding four, um, the next one that we could then say is going to add by five. Polygon names. So these are gonna be some classic polygon sides, uh, number of sides rather, and the names that go along with those polygons. So we should know a three-sided figure is a triangle. A four-sided polygon, sometimes people want to say square or rectangle, but that's a specific type of quadrilateral. So when we talk about a four-sided figure, we use quadrilateral because that's the overall name for the a four-sided figure. Five-side is pentagon. Six-side is hexagon. Seven-sided is heptagon or septagon. You can see either spelling online if you were searching something up for a seven-sided figure. Eight is octagon, nine is nonagon, 10 is decagon, 11 is hendecagon. We don't often use 11 sided figure, but that is the name of it. And 12 is dodecagon. And really, what happens past 12, if I say a 13 sided polygon, we just call it a 13 dash gon. So we put the number of sides dash g o n at the end. Uh, something also cool to kind of see here is if you recall learning in a history class, um, anything like that. There used to be 10 months in the year. And so the seventh month was September. The eighth month was October. The ninth month was November. And the 10th month was December. And then they brought in July and August after the fact, Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, um, to make it 12 months. But that's why you see these prefixes, which is pretty cool of sept, oct, non, and des um, for seven, eight, nine, and 10. 
So now what I want to show you is the polygon interior angle sum theorem. So the polygon interior angle sum theorem is that the sum of the interior angle measures of an n-sided convex polygon is 180 times n minus 2. Now here is what this is saying. It's saying if I want to figure out the, the sum of all of the interior angles of any polygon, no matter how many sides it has, I'm going to follow this formula. I'm going to do 180 times the number of sides it has subtracted by 2. So really what I'm doing is I'm going to take the number of sides, subtract it by 2, multiply that result by 180. So if I gave you a triangle and I go ahead and I substitute in the fact that it's got three sides, well, 3 minus 2 is 1, and 180 times 1 is just 180. But we knew that. We knew there's 180 degrees in a triangle. If I go over to this quadrilateral here, and I go ahead and I substitute in, okay, well, n is now 4. I'm doing 180 times 2, which is 360. And most of us should already know at this point there are 360 degrees in a quadrilateral. But something that's pretty cool I want to show you is that if you create the minimum number of diagonals, you can actually create 280 degree triangles. And 180 plus 180 is 360. And basically what I mean by the minimum number of diagonals is if you take any vertex and you draw the minimum number of diagonals you can make, or the maximum really, however many you can, that's going to divide up your polygon into triangles and each triangle is worth 180 degrees. So in this pentagon here, which I know I kind of have covered up, if I go ahead and I substitute in a five for N, and I do five minus two is three, I end up getting that there's 540 degrees in a pentagon, which look, if I take a vertex of the pentagon and I draw the diagonals, one, two, just the two unique diagonals, it's divided up into three triangles, which three times 180 is that 540. If I give you a pentagon and I ask you to find the value of X, well, what we would need to do first here is we need to be able to calculate how many degrees should all of those angles actually add up to. I know I did that in the previous slide, but this is what you would have to do first. You would have to be able to say, okay, well, I know there's 540 degrees in a pentagon by following that 180 times N minus two uh, mini formula. Then I'd be able to add up all of these expressions together, set them equal to 540. You can pause here if you want to try to solve this equation on your own until I'm able to solve for X and I end up getting X equals 20. And of course I could go in, I could substitute 20 in for X, add them all up, make sure I get 540 and I know I'm going to be good. Now if I was to ask you to figure out how many sides there are of a polygon if I give you an interior angle. Um, so this is kind of switching gears just a little bit. And so what this is actually saying is the measure of an interior angle is 150. So what I have to do is I need to figure out, okay, well, how many sides of a polygon does there need to be? So each interior angle of this regular polygon is 150. Now, the sum, in this case, S, that we were using as the answer before, we're actually going to be able to say, okay, well, each interior angle is 150, and the number of sides is equal to the number of angles. So I'm actually going to replace the sum of these angles with 150N. So 150N, so 150 degrees times the number of angles should be equal to 180 um, n minus 360 after I go ahead and I distribute. So what we're doing here, guys, is we're not plugging in the number of sides. We're actually solving for the number of sides. We want to know how many sides of a polygon do I need so each interior angle is 150. And the S we replace with that 150 N because that represents what the sum of all the angles is going to be. We're going to subtract 180 N on both sides. What you're going to notice here is you're always going to get a negative value negative 30n is equal to that negative 360. But we know we can't have a negative answer, which we're not going to have. We're going to divide both sides by negative 30, and we're going to end up getting n equals 12. 12 is a dodecagon. Now, to basically put this into um, writing for you, so if I have a dodecagon, right? So that's 180 times n minus 2. That's my formula. And if I go ahead and plug in a 12, well, 12 minus 2 is 10. 10 times 180 is 
1800. So there's 1800 degrees in all of the angles added up. Now, if I just prove that it's a dodecagon, think about this, and there's 12 sides, if I take in 12 angles, if I divide 180 by 12 angles, I'm sorry, 1800 divided by 12, it's going to give me my answer of 150, that each angle is 150 degrees. All right, let's look at the next one. The measure of an interior angle is 135. So I'm gonna replace the sum of all of the angles with 135n, because it's 135 times however many angles there are. Oops. We're then going to continue to just solve for n, so same, same steps as the previous problem. Subtract 180n, then divide by that negative 45. Always make sure you get a positive answer. We end up getting eight as the result. We know eight is an octagon. And again, if I followed the same rules and I went ahead and I did 180, let's see, eight-sided figure, so I'm gonna do eight minus two. It's really 180 times six, which let's see, is 600 plus uh, 480, so it's 1080. So there's 1080 degrees in an octagon, and if I divide that by eight sides, it's going to mean that each angle is definitely 135. So that's what we are actually doing when we solve this. These next two, if you wanna go ahead and pause and try them out, it's the same process, just different numbers, and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm gonna hope that you press play, uh, you press play now at this point, and you can see what I'm substituting in and how I'm getting my result. That one ends up being a 10-sided figure, which is the deck gone. And then if the interior angle is 160, I end up getting an 18-sided figure, which we just referred to as an 18 gone. Okay, so the last part of this is understanding the exterior angle um, sum theorem. It says the sum of the exterior angle measures of a convex polygon, one angle at each vertex is 360 degrees. This is pretty cool. So what this is saying is if I was to take this hexagon and basically extend the sides of every um, side of this hexagon and extend it so I make these exterior angles. They're called exterior because they're on the outside of the polygon. All of these exterior angles, whether it's a hexagon, a pentagon, a quadrilateral, an octagon, a dodecagon, is always going to add up to 360 degrees. Okay, it is pretty cool, okay? It's always going to be that way, um, no matter what the figure is. So now if I said to you, hey, I want you to actually find an exterior angle. There's two strategies for basically trying to figure out the measure of an exterior angle. And this works with, of course, just regular convex polygons. So um, strategy one is to find the interior angle and then find its linear pair. So let's say in this pentagon, I go ahead and I'm like, okay, there's five sides. I'm going to plug in a five for N. I'm going to figure out that, okay, there's 540 degrees in this pentagon, which now in this video lesson, we've seen that for the third time, right? 540 in a pentagon. Then I'd be like, okay, well, if there's 540 total in all of the angles, then if I do 540 divided by five, it's going to tell me that one of these little remote interiors is 108. So it's 108, 108, 108, 108, 108. Well, if this is 108, then I can go ahead and I can figure out the exterior because look, they make a linear pair. So I would say, okay, well, 180 minus that 108 is 72, and therefore my exterior angle is 72. And then notice if there's 72s, guys, 72, then this is 72, 72, 72. Guess what five times 72 is? It's 360. Okay, so they all, all of the exteriors will always add up to 360. It is pretty cool. Strategy two is if I give you this pentagon and I just say, hey, divide 360 by the number of exterior angles, that would be it. If I give you a regular pentagon and I just say, hey, take 360 divided by five, the number of sides of the figure, then you're immediately going to get that the exterior angle is 72. That's actually then also a really quick way to then find the interior because you would do 180 minus that 72 and you would be done.
That's everything we need to know for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.